Hi programmers, and welcome to another Plus One Software video. I'm Ellie Zeno, and I'm a technical trainer at Danfoss Power Solutions. Torge Peterson, a software product application engineer at Danfoss, created all the lovely screenshots, screen captures, and edits. In this video, I will be walking you through how to configure your CS10 device for machine-to-machine -machine connections, also known as M2M. An M2M connection is also called a CAN bridge, and the M2M bridge establishes a connection that transmits CAN messages between CS10 devices using an existing Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection. Torge set up this great example project to show you how Plus One software can be used to create M2M connections. The project consists of an MCO24 microcontroller, which is capable of data acquisition and calculation while also sending out CAN messages to another device. In this example, the other device is a DM1000 display. To send out and receive the CAN messages, it's necessary to have physical wiring, which can be challenging for some projects. Instead of a physical connection for the CAN communication, I will use two CS10s to build up a CAN bridge. One CS10 is connected to the CAN of the microcontroller, and another CS10 is connected to the DM1000 display. Each CS10 will act as a remote interface for sending and receiving CAN messages that can be accessed from the microcontroller and display as if they were physically connected. To do so, first the communication between both CS10s needs to be established via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. In addition, both devices must have full access operation mode active. This operation mode can be configured on the machine state determination page. Full access mode is set by default. Because they are on the same network, different nodes should be used after connecting via M2M. This can be done on the miscellaneous page. If you are connecting your CS10s with Wi-Fi, the two devices should be connected peer-to-peer, -peer, where one device needs to work as an access point, and the second device will be working in station mode. It is recommended to enable DHCP on both sides. Another way to do this is to create a Bluetooth connection between the two devices. Regardless of if you have configured the CS10 devices for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, for a successful M2M configuration, one device needs to be configured as a master or manager, and the other one as a slave or server, using the role field. Starting with the manager CS10, you can do as Torge did, and keep the default node address, which is 40. Check the operation mode is in full access mode, which you can check on the machine state determination page, and save the settings if needed. On the Wi-Fi page, set the operation mode to access point and check the box auto enable Wi-Fi. On the operation tab, define a new SSID and password and then save the settings. Click on enable if it is not already enabled and that's it for the Wi-Fi settings. On the M2M page, set the role to master, manager. Check the box next to auto enable, which will enable M2M on that unit automatically when the device is powered on. Next, change the parameter remote EID mode to manual, where a connection to the device with the interlink EID to be set in the remote EID field is established. The EID can be found on the CS10 label or you can read it out via service tool, shown on this page under Device EID, with the CS10 that you want to connect to. To connect to a CS10, the remote password has to be applied in the remote password field, where it must match the local password of the server device. The local password of the server device is set on the miscellaneous page, which I'll go over a little later in the video. For simplicity's sake, set the remote password to be similar to the Wi-Fi password. In this case, it is CS10 M2M. On the M2M page for the manager device, you can define the set of messages to be transferred to and from the connect device via input and output filter configuration. The input filter defines which messages get transmitted from the server to the manager, and the output filter defines which messages get transmitted from the manager to the server. In the drop-down list, there are three options available. The default setting is block all messages, which allows no messages to pass through. 
The second option is pass all messages, which allows all messages to pass through. And the third option is define messages, which offers the opportunity to explicitly select up to 10 messages to be transmitted. If the set of filter mask is set to zero for both, all messages will pass the bridge. If the set of filter mask is set to in hex 0x8 followed by seven zeros for both, then the message is blocked. In our example here, he set the input and output filter to pass all messages to allow all messages to pass through. All these settings are applied to the CS10 device when pressing the save button. The manager device automatically starts to establish a connection as soon as it's enabled via the enable button. The current status of the connection is shown under status. The status stopped means that the M2M connection is disabled and needs to be enabled. The status identifying means that the M2M manager is trying to connect to the M2M server, in this case to the remote EID specifically. The status running means that the M2M communication has been successfully established between the manager and the server. And that's it for the manager settings. Now you will need to connect to the other CS10. First, you should change the node address on the miscellaneous page. In this example, he changed the node address to 41. Since our intent is to configure the CS10 as the M2M server, the local password must also be changed, which has to match the remote password which you set on the M2M manager. In our example, it is CS10 M2M. Save the settings and move to the Wi-Fi page. Set the operation mode to station mode and check the box next to auto enable Wi-Fi. Save the settings and change to the operation tab. Check the box next to auto connect so that the CS10 M2M server automatically connects to the last connected network which in this case is the access point from the M2M manager. The Wi-Fi should be enabled by default. If not, it needs to be enabled via the enable button. If the access point is not shown automatically, a scan needs to be triggered via the scan button. The CS10 access point of the M2M manager should now be listed. Type in the correct password and click connect. As soon as both CS10s are connected, their LEDs flash white, which indicates that they are connected via Wi-Fi. Since the M2M setting for the CS10 server is set by default, there is no need to change any more settings. The M2M connection starts as soon as the Wi-Fi connection has been established between the M2M manager and the M2M server. After you set up both CS10s with M2M, these two devices and all other ECUs are physically connected to the same CAN port. This means that after scanning, all the devices are listed in the ECU list of the service tool. You will need to check in the service tool which node you are reading from. It's important that you use two different node addresses since they are in the same network to avoid a node conflict. The CAN messages sent from the MC024 controller via the CS10 manager are received inside the DM1000 display via the connected M2M server. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One community help is available on the Plus One user forum, or you can contact the Plus One help desk. And don't forget to check out our other Plus One videos here on YouTube at Plus One Software. Happy programming!